Hi, I'm Alex Duquette, and you're watching a podcast where nostalgia comes alive. It's Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show. Roll it! Welcome to Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, the podcast where nostalgia comes alive. Since July of 2021, Jake and his friends have interviewed professionals in the worlds of acting, directing, writing, puppeteering, and many more. Who will they be chatting with in this week's interview? Find out in this Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show episode. Hey everyone, welcome to this episode of Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, where nostalgia comes alive. Happy, happy you here with us. Thank you for joining us. As always, I'm your host, Jake Dunbar, which is always our co-host, Chris McSpee, and Matt Bingo. How you guys doing? We're doing, doing good. good. Hey everybody, how you doing, Jakey? I'm doing great, Matt. Thank you for asking. Chris, Wonderful. what do we have for today? Very excited about today's guest. Our guest today is an actor, TV presenter, and radio DJ. From 2003 to 2007, he hosted the internet station Radio KOL and hosted various projects for Nickelodeon, CBS, National Geographic, and many more. He's also written for advertising and also does a lot of charity work, which we will talk about later on. Um, here he is, Mr. Rick Adams. Rick, happy to have you here. <laughs> Hi, hi everybody! Uh, really nice to see you guys, and and to hear you too. Yes, a privilege. Yes, yes. <laughs> Likewise. Yes, yes. So to kick this off, um, in your own words, could you kind of uh, tell our audience a bit about yourself and what you do? Oh, and also, before you what? do that, we have a special guest joining us for the Wait a minute. Interview. Hang on. We just started this damn thing. <laughs> Stop Hello. the presses. Yes, <laughs> DJ Bob, ladies and gentlemen. DJ, DJ Bob Wankel. My old nemesis. <laughs> I hope you didn't Bob? bring your lightsabers with you today, Bob. <laughs> How are you doing, Bob? Doing good, doing good. Good. I know I hop in for a lot of these, but this one is uh, yes. very special, and I'm sure we'll get into that. Yes. Absolutely. So, so yeah, um, to start this off, could you tell our audience a little bit about yourself and what you do? Yes, I'm an international man of mystery. I uh, live inside um, cupboards um, that, that go into Narnia and uh, there I meet strange uh, hoofed animals who then uh, introduce me to weird queens who have uh, Turkish delight and hot chocolate. Um, and by queens, I mean, of course, uh, regal ladies who are ruling over, uh, well, illegally ruling over. Let's face it, there's no democracy in Narnia. Anyway, sorry. Um, no, this is absolutely nonsense. Um, I, I, my name is Rick Adams. Um, I was born because my mummy and daddy loved each other very much. And um, you, do you need all that? I mean, do you really, you don't really need to go into the whole like how I was made, because because no one's really told me about that. So um, <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, uh, I am. Uh, well, I started off doing Nickelodeon, and um, uh, you, you, as you kindly said in the intro. Um, and uh, I was I was at university and I was I was doing commercial radio actually at the time and uh, I had to create a play for my um, a radio play for my uh, degree and then suddenly I got into radio then Nickelodeon came along Children's BBC and then I ended up in America doing a, a kids radio show and um, which is probably the most fun job I've had in my entire life and um, Hopefully there's a bit more life left, but you know, I'm just saying um, it was, it was pretty amazing. And, um, uh, and since then I've done all kinds of crazy things. And um, a, a couple of weeks ago, I won an Emmy. <laughs> it sucked it. Ah, <laughs> nice. nice. Congratulations. Thanks. Thank you. I can't quite understand what's going on. It's a little bit of a bonkers career, but um, right. um, so anyway, it's uh, here I am. And uh, I have to apologize to your viewers, listeners, and um um, people um, uh, listening in color um, that, uh, you know, uh, I am a bit phlegmy um, and you'll probably hear me sniff and blow, blow my nose and probably even cough really badly. So um, I, I'm I'm not feeling I'm not feeling myself, which is that's probably the, the right way to put it. Um, <laughs> and uh, but I hope that I will be able to deliver, um, uh, the, you know, a, a good conversation with you today, uh, along with some phlegm. You're welcome. <laughs> Oh, this should be interesting then. First off, congratulations <laughs> on the Emmy again. Uh, that's, Thank you. That's Thank wonderful. You. It's, it's yes. wonderful. I can um, retire now, right? That's it. I can just give up. Yeah. I just go and work, <laughs> at, just go and work at Costco or something. That's all you I can need. Work, you, can work, you can work for me. Yeah. Oh, I'll go work for DJ Bob as your 
I, I don't think you'd let me be your executive producer. I'd probably have to be your lackey. I'd probably have to go out and buy you, you know, frappuccinos or whatever it is you want these yeah. days. <laughs> yeah. I mean, don't give him caffeine, honestly, seriously. It's like the last mm-hmm. person on the planet you want to give caffeine to, DJ Bob. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I did it once. I, I visited him a couple of times, but um, I, I, I bought a coffee for him the last time and his head, <laughs> his head blew off. It actually just, <laughs> and, I, and I was just like, well... Well, what are we going to do with this? And right. luckily I had some um, packing tape and stuff. And, um, you know, Bob's never really been the same, but he's, he's sort of all right. Aren't you, Bob? <laughs> yeah, see Debatable. What I mean? Debatable. 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh. So, so this, I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued about how you guys all got together too. It's very, it's, it, it's great that you guys are all pals. It's like, how long have you guys known yeah. each uh, depends on the web, I guess. Depends on yeah. the web of what direction you want to go. Me and Jacob um, have known each other the longest. We've been friends now for almost uh, five years. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh-huh. Really? That's so mm-hmm. cool. Sounds about right. Mm-hmm. And, and, yeah. and how, yeah. did you, how, how did you guys meet? Oh, boy. Well, that goes back quite a bit. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah. So, so are we talking like Clone Wars or are we talking, I mean, how far back are we going to have to go, you know? Uh, um... Yeah, well, me and uh, me and uh, Jake uh, played uh, Roblox together, oh, which nice. is a very popular uh, gaming platform. We still we still do, but um, yeah, we kind of met through there, right? And um, and yes, yeah, so, and then uh, Jake and Matt were uh, they've been friends for almost three years, mm-hmm. just over three years. Yeah. yeah, just over, just over. And then three I introduced years. to Chris, and then you introduced yeah. to Chris. And then, and then Jake and then Jake and I started this uh podcast kind of like as a just a fun kind of project and then around like 20ish episodes later Matt came in. Mhm. Mm-hmm. So it was a couple couple months later. Yeah. Like maybe yeah. about mm-hmm. Yeah. But um, six, but I met I met I I met Chris first. Yeah. I yeah. How that worked and then I so they heard my show and they were like I they they were they were work, They were doing stuff. Chris was kind of editing and doing stuff of the like, like 2016, 2017. Yeah. And then they started this, and I feel like a proud dad, watching them do so many episodes. And... Well, I okay. hope you're an actual dad because I don't even want to know how that works. But um, <laughs> you know, because technically, I mean, we need to look at a timeline here. Unless you went back in time, yeah, I, I, it could it could happen. It could happen. Basically, you know what he's Jake, like. He's Jakey, kind of a... Jakey, I'm not so sure though. Honestly, I'm not so sure. <laughs> you know, you know why, Jakey. You know why. <laughs> okay, it's, just, oh, it's already yeah. it's already getting deep. It's already oh, yeah. getting... no uh... <laughs> only a couple of minutes in. Yeah. They <laughs> can get yeah, there. You... They can get therapy, yes. <laughs> Isn't it always? Isn't it always? It is. Yeah. I'd I'd say it kind of is. Yeah. Uh, and then, so that's uh, kind of that's kind of our web. And then uh Yeah, and then, of, uh, and then Chris introduced me to Bob and then Yeah, you know, and then Matt, you know, Bob yeah. and then you know, all four of us, yep. you know, we're just Yeah, I'm kinda like their mentor. Basically, pretty much like i was gonna say i think it sounds like you're kind of like kevin bacon <laughs> <laughs> i could see that yeah i can see that it seems to me that everybody in showbiz finds their way back through dj bob at some point you know what i mean pretty much yeah well pretty well, much. well i always tell them that you were one of the reasons responsible as to why i do what i do so me meeting them is kind of your fault too yeah, listen, you can't blame me for that, man. I mean, you know, that's your own fault. <laughs> that's your own fault for experimenting. You were you were wild kid, man. You experimented on the wild side with internet radio. You but, were just like, you were like, right, you, I'm, I'm going to go out there on the mean streets of the internet and listen to this weird, pale British guy. But you didn't have to indulge in it. You no, didn't have to. You didn't have to interact with me. It's true. I but didn't, you, but I couldn't help myself. I mean, I, my voice was higher then. That should have been a that that should have been a dead giveaway. Just 
it run was a bit it was a bit the hill well it was just those tight pants but now you figured all that out you're okay you're good now you know that that approval means the world anyway guys go on <laughs> okay. okay. Very well. Wow, that got that got deep there. No it's problem, it, right? It. No. Yeah, we're, no we're definitely all gonna need we're, we're all gonna need therapy after this episode, man. I mean, my goodness. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'd say so. Yeah. Look at so, poor Jake. What we're we doing to him? God. He always seems to be like that, though. At times. So. Oh, okay. Nothing okay. new. It's nothing normal. new it's at all. I mean, I mean, it's yeah. normal. It's fine. That's obvious. It's, it's, it's a real life. You're going to be okay, Jake. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he met Matt Hammer. When can you meet Matt? Uh, well, you know, now, now we're talking, now we're on hallowed ground. I mean, if you've met yes. Matt <laughs> Hammer, then that is it. You know, then you've, it's almost like you've completed your mission. Now you've, Guys, you, you meet Bob and Hammer. Guy, that's quick, it. Man. Tri- quick trivia. In 2003, when Radio KOL launched, Hammer was the first ever call. You yeah. told me that, yes. I think I remember you telling me that. me that, yeah. Really? Yes. Wow. Interesting, yeah. <laughs> it was so funny. We went live on a Sunday, I think it was, or a Saturday, I can't remember, but we went live two days ahead of time or a day ahead of time just to just to make sure the pipes all worked and everybody could hear us. And um and he was the yeah, he was the first kid who I picked up the phone on Radio K one and he was like, Hi, it's Crazy Matt. And, well, he didn't say he wasn't called Crazy Matt then because we, we you know, I was handing out DJ names. So, you know, it was we, we did a sort of anointing process on the air where uh, where kids would phone up and and I would sort of come up with a DJ name for them or they would choose one themselves. And and I think he chose Crazy Crazy Matt, actually, I think. So which which is so apposite to the theme. I mean it's completely was totally him. And uh, you know. So and that, and it went on from there. I mean, the moment that I had a call with him, I just thought, actually, this job's going to be all right. It's going to work. I think, you know. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it did it definitely did. So, what was your background like, and how did you grow up? Um, I I grew up uh, I grew up on the streets as a as a a, 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 a small feral cat, um, rummaging through the bins. Uh, eating um, you know, errant bits of KFC bones, um, and then I was I was found I was found by a radio uh, executive producer who 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 took me in and um, gave me breakfast. And um, isn't that a lyric from something? Took me in and gave me breakfast. Yeah, that's oh yeah. It's, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. I come from the land under. Yeah, that's it. It's I come from mm-hmm. the land under, down under. Um, anyway, yes, I, I was born uh, in a very small. Um, city called winchester in the south of england um and it is um it's a city because it's got a massive cathedral so any any city in england that has a cathedral in it uh is is a city by that that reason but this city doesn't really deserve to be a city because it's tiny but it's got a massive cathedral so it's like oh, okay and they 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 built it on a swamp they hadn't quite figured it out so they they built it on a swamp and it started sinking into a swamp and uh, and they got a bloke to go down with bags of concrete to actually shore the entire cathedral up. Now that's a true story, and we can go into that with greater detail another time. But I grew up there. Um, I always wanted to be in radio. I started off in hospital radio. Um, um, in fact, um, which didn't mean I had to actually be run over and then sent to um, um, ER or anything like that, and then end up in hospital and do radio. But it, it actually was, um, you know, they had a radio service that my mum actually was um, volunteering for. Um, she would go to all the ladies and ask them for requests and stuff like that you know in the in the wards and um yeah it was a cool it's a cool sort of introduction and i always loved radio and i had some big heroes like kenny everett and um people i used to listen to on the radio i used to listen to a lot of radio comedy and old old stuff so i was really interested in radio a lot and um it 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 just as a natural progression to try and get involved somehow so i ended up doing hospital radio broadcasting to pregnant ladies I did a show because, of course, you know, that's what you do. You give a sort of, I don't know, 14 year old kid a chance to do a request show for pregnant ladies. I mean, you're bound to have lots of interests, right? Right. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. So so that was kind of a weird thing, but it was fun. And um, I would play all kinds of cryptic songs like The Labour of Love and, you know, Wide Eyed and Legless or whatever it is, you know, just because I was 14. I was being a jerk. Um, and, But they were very kind to me. And. I also set up my college radio station, um, which invariably meant me playing a lot of U2 songs um, and getting the, the door knocked down by all the really hip kids trying to get me to play all this, you know, cool bands. Um, and um, so, so it really started there, you know, and 
and I did a lot of drama and acting at school and um, I was going to do a business degree. <laughs> um, and my drama teacher said, um, so, uh, Rick, how are you doing with the with your results for the exams? And I said, well, I'm, I'm failing pretty much every one, uh, particularly business studies. I'm, I'm failing that. And he went, great. And so what are you going to go and study for a degree? Uh, business studies. What are you doing? You're, you're insane. No, don't do this. You should be working in the media. Go and find another course. And so um, I found a media production course in Bournemouth. Um, great course, met amazing people. And I got a degree in media production. And that really set me up. And then I ended up in, you know, Nickelodeon and uh, auditioning for Nickelodeon because of this, this sort of very silly radio play I wrote about a Radio 4 shipping forecast. So uh, I found an actor and she said, you should, you should be in kids TV. You know, you've got way too much energy. So I went and auditioned for that and ended up in Nickelodeon. So, so I started off at a, you know, nice family, I mean, really, really nice family. Great, great family. In fact, very tight family. Um, and um always wanted to be doing something with my voices always was doing lots of silly voices and recording in fact with my best friend steve we were recording silly um sort of versions of star wars on cassette tape with little tiny microphones when i was about six or seven and i've still got the recording somewhere and um mm. they're, they're quite terrifying nice. to listen to gotta get those digitized for your uh <laughs> i know what i'm doing you think i'm gonna let you hear that stuff no, oh my you... god! No, no, for your for your documentary and like, <laughs> yeah, come on, for my for my biography when I'm 97. Yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of how I started out. I was I was in England and really, um, you know, it was a exciting time Nickelodeon because Nickelodeon wasn't doing very well here, um, and so uh, thanks to the genius of um, uh, Malcolm Bird and David Rose and John Miller, they they basically decided to hire loose cannon kids crazy kids to sort of basically turn up and talk in between ren and stimpy and do silly things and talk to kids on the phones and this is before the internet so we had phones and faxes so we were getting kids phoning in and we'd have a mixing desk right next to me it was all and we'd have a state-of-the-art system where i push a button and an animated ren and stimpy would walk across the screen and i could be in charge of all of that so it was real it was real vj stuff and it was quite embarrassing for Nickelodeon really in a way because MTV part of the same network and they couldn't even do this and we were doing this out of basically what was a tiny shop floor window in a place called the Trocadero which is a shopping center in London and I'm sitting there taking live calls from kids in the morning um we had some swearing naughty things happen as well and all kinds of funny things happen because it's live television but um <laughs> did did all that and um I I literally got thousands of hours of training how to talk to kids how to be live how to have the responsibility of being my own producer and also being you know live to to a nation so uh that's that's kind of how i ended up in in tv it's quite weird it's interesting uh, so back in the 90s you hosted the first series what we call seasons you call it series over there in the uk <laughs> of the itv game show crazy cottage mm. Mm. yeah yeah yeah, um, that was a very strange game show. Cause yes, it, started... it was. <laughs> it started. Have you seen it, Bob? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the idea of the show, for those who don't know it, and that's everybody, <laughs> is that it was um, it was backwards. So you'd start with the end credits. So we started waving. We basically were off camera, and we'd wave, walking backwards, waving as the credits rolled. And you up. would literally, see, yeah, wow. you would literally, yeah, wow, with backwards. It was totally backwards, and um, we had a we had a uh, a um, a parrot. Well, it wasn't a crow who used to sit in a in a clock house and talk to me. And then we had all these kids, and we had to play these games backwards as well, and all kinds. Of, it was just it was it was like, oh. like Pee Wee Herman doing a game <laughs> show. Like it was that kind of whimsical stuff. It was. It was <laughs> I feel like it would do well in America, like something like it. It was so. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're right. I think I think there's space for it, knowing as I do American audiences now. I think yeah, you're right, Bob. I think I think that's right. It was a lot of fun. I mean, most of all, the funnest part for me was the end, the end piece of the show, or the, or should I say, the beginning piece of the show, um, because we'd have this final contest where teams would have to be in a kitchen and get stuff out of the cupboards and then put them find you know what they needed to put into a 
cage and then they would get points on on collecting the items you know and um but what what the kids at home didn't realize is that it was shot on like a 45 degree angle <laughs> and, oh, wow. and the camera was on a 45 degree angle as well so you lit i mean i don't think they'd let us do it these days i think it's it's probably like health and safety disaster but um there were literally kids just like falling off the stage <laughs> and just oh, and, wow. and, and of course there'd be liquids and like all kinds of stuff coming out of these cupboards and it was just it was it was probably the most insane thing i had to do um and and i would literally be trying to commentate but also co coordinate uh, as kids were flying past me were like oh there goes brian you know like, <laughs> so you know and it was um it was a very very silly game show but it was great fun great fun to do um um i'm so sorry for anybody who saw it i i, I think you probably need your eyes I, uh soothing i'll never forget where i watched it i we were in a this was when radio kol was still going and one of our one of my friends who you don't know guy uh chris riddle he was ah, like, i know he chris was, riddle <laughs> he like you gotta watch this. And I'm like, wait, what? And like, you were still on, you were still on the air. So I said, I was like, that's not the Rick I know. Like, I was so thrown off. It was hilarious. <laughs> well, and that's, um, yeah, quite something. We were watching it on YouTube. But it was, so oh, you yeah. must be watching when YouTube was just, was probably not even bought by Google at that point. You were probably watching it when they were running up huge bills. And in fact, we did the show in two places. Um, I just read today that um, that AWOL headquarters is being knocked down at the moment um, in uh, uh, down in uh, Dallas, Virginia. And so we oh had my, oh my, real, yeah, oh it's my. really really sad. <laughs> oh. but, but luckily, the 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 building in which I did the show from is going to be all right. Um, but um, okay, good, that's good, that's good. So CC6, as it was known. But um, then we moved to Reston. And in Reston, um, we were right next door to uh, a whole bunch of um, things happening. And of course, Akamai were there. And they were the guys providing all the servers for YouTube. And um, they were the ones making out like bandits because they were getting paid a fortune. But they, yeah. I remember talking to them and saying, well, you know, they, they owe us a lot of money. <laughs> and But they're paying us a lot of money. And it's hopefully it'll work out. And then Google bought them and saved them. Otherwise, YouTube yeah. would never never have existed it was literally that close to just just failing so that's when you must have watched it bob I, oh my god yeah i'm sorry to keep interjecting but it's like that's okay i was, I was telling them I, I was telling them like i had to be here but they i told them they wouldn't know me if it wasn't for my interactions with you and matt and all that like when i say you're responsible it's not a joke like you you gave me my name yes because before uh bob's name was eric and oh, wow. um, <laughs> so i just thought this name isn't as cool as bob and therefore you shall be known as bob from now on no, and seemed, his parents were pretty pissed about it i have to say um uh <laughs> luckily i you know I, I had enough cash to be able to pay you know to have his name changed by Depot and you know it's quite a complicated process. Um but... I meant I meant the DJ name, thank you. Oh, 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 <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. I I I've told them too much. I've told them too much. Um yes, no, you're you're right. We did uh, we did this kind of baptizing process uh, on the show <laughs> earlier, where you literally be like or knighting. You'd be I, it's more like knighting, really, wasn't it? Or DJing. So so people would kindly ask you know what what name they would like like to be. And um like back then I was called Bobby, I think that's how I would have. Yeah, Bobby. Hey, Bobby, what you doing? And, and it, was, on, Bobby? It, it was just like, you were like, no, you're DJ Bob. Yeah. But, but like, because, like, and after that, it was like, well, that's my name now. Like, there was no other telling. And then a couple years later, the the podcast that I do came to be, and you were you were the first guest on that. So everything comes full circle. Yeah, I'm so sorry about that, Bob. You, you really, you could have done better. You could have done better. <laughs> so sorry, man. You know, but um, from small acorns grow mighty trees, and that is that is the DJ Bob show. 
And um, oh yes, um, mm-hmm. I was no, I was very very. I mean, I was when I started the job at, at AOL and doing kids online KOL radio KOL as it was called, um, which is quite funny because there was another radio KOL online at the time. <laughs> I, I know kingdom of I, loathing I, <laughs> it was very confusing yeah and um i don't think they were very happy and i think i think aol actually tried to stop them from broadcasting and i was like hey man can't we all just get along you know so um but uh so what happened was I, when i first started the job i just thought i didn't know american kids that well i knew british kids pretty well and i wasn't sure if kids in america would get my sense of humor whether i talk because i talk funny would i talk too fast um, you know, would I be of any interest at all? And I was 31, I think, when I was do- doing it. So, no, 32. So, um, so you know, I mean, that's an older age for for dealing with a kid's audience of like nine to 12. But luckily, mm. you know, I've never grown up. So so that was easy, easy in that sense. But um, and I, I never intend to grow up, by the way. Growing up sucks. Yeah. Um, so it's boring. You so tell bo- them. Oh, it's just the worst. Who needs to? It's rubbish. Um, so... I wasn't sure it was going to work, but the moment that Matt came on the air and I started talking to him and I realized I could make him laugh and then, you know, getting people like Bob on the air and um, DJ Pooh Bear, Chris oh, Ridd, um, yeah. you know, people who would just be, I was so impressed with American kids because they, they, you guys are all ready made comics. You know, you're already made comedians. You're already made your, the wit level is very high. And also the, the, the mental agility and speed is fast and I wasn't prepared for that you know because all we saw in America was just like in England sorry about America was that you know it's a it, it didn't seem like and I'm not being rude but it didn't seem like they were set up as a as, as a very intelligent country and of course what, oh, what a, what a, oh, a lot of think, a you know? lot of a lot of us are dumb don't get that <laughs> don't get that well, there's important. plenty of plenty of dumb people in my country too oh but yeah I mean, but you just don't know, do you? You don't know. You just you go yeah. into a country open minded about it. So um, so meeting Bob and then, you know, it presented a challenge because you'd you know, you, I, I'd have to up my game because Bob's so quick. And, you know, and, and so were all the other, you know, regular callers. And then 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 we had the problem of just like, oh, crap, we can't get everybody on every day. Otherwise, the other callers will get really. Yeah, they won't come on. So I would, my thing was. I need to call every two weeks. That was my thing because I wanted. You were to, good about that. Yeah, you were good about that. I wanted to be a regular, but that's because that's because I loved you and I loved talking to you and like you made us. And I say us is like the audience. Is, you made us feel like we were your friend but you weren't pandering or patronizing towards us, which I know you hated in, um, how do we say, other children's radio outlets <laughs> that were... Yeah, um... that's right, Bob. How are you today? Yes. <laughs> story. <laughs> oh, you're a big boy. Like, what? <laughs> you know? You've grown up. Wow, look at you. It's like I just I really you know who wants to be talked to like that man I mean it's you know my yeah. mom is 92 and she she um still has her marbles but um let's say that they're not quite so shiny as they used to be and so if anybody comes in and goes hey now how are you today she's like oh stop it you know so it's you know it, it doesn't matter how old you are or young you are nobody wants to be talked down to I think talking up to is the biggest secret of my career i mean you just talk up to everybody and treat everybody as you can as an equal i think and and bob you're good at that yourself so um and what can it what can always like that i mean i a lot of my stuff in the beginning was super like not scripted but it was so formulaic and now it's just like let's have a conversation and see where it goes and that's sort of what these guys are doing too so I think yeah, it's great. I, mean, I, I think it's so great that people get to do this. I, that that you know, when I was when I was a kid, we just had cassette players, and we'd have to make a radio station that would broadcast to our parents downstairs, or you know, we'd oh have to God. record a cassette tape and send yeah, it. Yeah, I me and... me too. I had the transmitter, all that, the little. 
50 feet or whatever it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so a squirrel's listening you know like hey. you know and that's that's it basically so um but but I, I think this is beautiful i think the fact you can reach you know far and wide and, and be and also be together i mean the whole pandemic thing as well you know thank, thank goodness for this because if we didn't have the internet you know it'd be it would have been a horrific time but um but i think radio I think, you know, I think Zoom is the new radio. I think, you know, all of that and and not just Zoom, but I mean, all these great ways to stream and talk to each other and do do great things. I mean, it's, yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm kind of hoping it brings people together, but uh, looking at today's world. Hello. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's going to get better, guys, because I've been around the block a little longer than you guys have. And um, things go in circles. Things get better. They always give up, and I refuse to believe they don't. I also believe that we have to be positive, and we have to help each other and be as kind as we can to each other. And I think um, uh, that's not easy. And everybody has has crappy days, and some days are better than others. But we have to help each other, you know. And and also we're going to make mistakes. We all make mistakes. We have to own up to them and just be okay with them and learn to forgive ourselves and forgive each other. Oh goodness me, I'm going to get my guitar out and sing "Kumbaya." <laughs> 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 sorry guys it's the um it's the flu medication i'm on actually <laughs> <laughs> it's That's really good medication. stuff i don't even know what day it is <laughs> <laughs> well i do know your birthday in a few days so there's a yes well i'll be uh 97 so um i know i look good right amazing isn't it yeah yeah <laughs> i um, you know i have a spare wheelchair in the garage i'll get you one. Oh, thank you that is very kind does it have a toilet in it that'd be really handy very useful <laughs> oh it can add on you could just buy it on amazon it could be there in like two days it's an add-on <laughs> <laughs> <It's an add-on. laughs> that's great that's great because you can be having a chat and be like why, why, why are you making that face rick uh, i don't know i'm just I'm, I'm fine now. Thank you. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm thinking really. I'm thinking really hard. <laughs> you know, it's like if you have kid bro- babies and brothers, the faces they make. You know, you know when something's happening when they're little babies. They're just like, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, sorry guys. Sorry. We've no. lowered the uh, lowered okay. the tone. No, lowered no, the fine guys. It's fine. Oh, it's disgusting. Fine. <laughs> disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> So in 1996, you co-presented Channel 4's The Big Breakfast. Uh, can you talk a bit about that? Yeah, um, uh, it was um, it was a live daily show. Um, it was a two-hour show. And so I have to get up at like three in the morning and we'd um, be ready to be on the air for seven. And um, uh, a whole bunch of other hosts were, had been on it before me and, uh, and after me. And... Um, it was kind of like an entertainment show, family entertainment show, um, as sort of like an alternative to just rolling nonstop news on the other channels uh, or sort of like Good Morning America style programming in the UK. Um, and this was this was basically um, a lot more fluid, a lot more freeform. I was 23, 24, I think. Um, was that 96, 95? I think it started. I can't remember. But um, yeah, so I was 24. Um, and... And it was, I was way too young to do that show. <laughs> I wasn't, I don't think I was a good fit. And also um, it was a, it was a bit of a rough old time working with some interesting people. So uh, it was not the best experience I'd ever had. And in fact, I, I, it was a great lesson for me because, I, because it felt like my career was just doing this after Nickelodeon. And I did the children's BBC show, which I made and did this really cool interactive show called Reactive, which, um, was one of the first interactive live TV shows on BBC One. I never saw that. Um, you know, kids could actually control computer games with their phone handset. You know, not mobile phone, but like deck, wired phone. Deck suite. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So they'd, they'd be recorded. You know. So and that, and that was my great love, I have to say, because I I was able to write that show, um, write the bits that I was in, and and create a, a very sort of me kind of atmosphere. And that was in BBC One and TV Centre, you know, and it was like, I, I really felt I'd made it. And um, it was extraordinary. So so it was fun. It was fun. And and that period, you know, uh, Channel 4 was, you know, 
I met amazing people because of that job. I met uh, Eric Idle from Monty Python. Um, I met, you know, Barry Humphreys, who's Dame Edna Everidge. And um, I, I met all kinds of incredible. The the one that I remember you telling me about is when you met Shaggy. And you sang Boombastic with him. My goodness, I've forgotten all about that. My God, you remember every Bob remembers everything. He's got a mind like a, I don't know, like Judge Roll Bank. It's like, <laughs> just co collects information and then never lets it go. Um, in fact, I just think you should work for, you know, the security services. They, they, they could really use you. Um, <laughs> you'd be really good. Um, yeah, yeah, there was that. And then Andy McDowell, I I danced with her and did the, did the, um, Macarena with her, I think that was good. And fun. you did a bit with the Spice Girls, right? Like you did. Yeah, yeah. They were just breaking out, and um, some wise guy decided to send me to go and interview them, dressed in a schoolboy's outfit with shorts. Um, and okay. they were at an all-girls oh. school. Well, that's so, not the that's not the last time you did that, but we'll get into that later. No, but I mean, you know, uh, obviously, I was. Uh, me, my my youngest, more glorious self. It was. Uh, I can tell you that I got so many proposals of marriage from those Spice Girls. <laughs> it was just embarrassing. So, and I said, you know, I can't marry all of you girls. Just calm it down. And um, you know, um, and so I, I married none of them because I just felt it wasn't fair. You know, somebody was going to get hurt, and and I don't Great. believe it. Yeah. Well, you didn't want to shake a shake a heart. That's why. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> and it starts everybody <laughs> yeah i think you can get a cream for that but anyway um uh so on a uh, bravo tv you co-hosted a uh, mission paintball what was that kind of uh, experience like <laughs> well chris um uh I, i'm sure you guys have played paintball or at least been near it and um have you guys ever received um a paintball on your body at any point I've actually never played uh, paintball, but I've definitely seen. I I know what paintball is, obviously, and I've seen yeah, you know yeah, people yeah. play it, but I've never played it myself. But mm -hmm. I can I can imagine. Yeah, it's I like imagine. it's like being hit by a BB gun pellet that's about three or four inches bigger than than you know than that, Ooh. and 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 then it explodes with paint to show that you've been hit. And um, so it was a <laughs> this guy Richard. Richard Hersey, who I'd worked with, well, I hadn't worked with him before, actually, but weirdly knew him through, I was in Cub Scouts and I knew him through this and he had a production coming and he was like, Rick, I just, I really want you to host it. So uh, me and uh, this girl, Emily, who was really great. Um, and um, that was a crazy, crazy, really crazy show because um, obviously I had to do live commentary of people being shot at. <laughs> <laughs> which is almost like you know it's impossible to keep up with what's going on so we were on a we were up up in kind of like um like an uh, end or kind of ewok setup where we we're at the top looking down whilst all these teams are battling um you know amongst themselves to get to the flag and do all the usual stuff that you would do in a game of paintball and um i remember i was with uh, a really good friend of mine gavin who is the cameraman he was such a lovely guy he took a lot of precaution all the cameramen padded themselves to the gills because they obviously didn't want to get hit and they they were getting in there you know so he had padding everywhere and this guy had been really you know he'd been really conscientious he padded everything except one really tiny small area between his legs underneath his legs where you know your butt meets the other bits and he hadn't put any padding there oh my god oh, none no. of us None of us knew this, right? So, uh, and he's a guy. So, uh, and for for girls, um, and for and for, for for guys, as we know, what happens if any of those parts are hit? There is, a, you know, a basically a historical reaction which has been built up by cave cave people from a very early age, where we, you know, if we were bitten by a, or hit in the privates by anything, um, we would have about ten seconds to drag our entire family into the cave away from the saber toothed tiger before the pain hit, because um, it is a very peculiar thing about being a guy. When you get hit in that area, there is a delay of about 10 seconds. Yeah. I don't, I mean, that's the only thing I can figure it must be for. So um, 
wow, this this show's really going off. The rails. Uh, you could tell this. <laughs> <you're talking. laughs> I'm sorry. I'm this, so this, sorry. This is this is not your typical episode, everybody. And I'm I, I, I'd like to apologize for anybody. For who's, uh, but anyway, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> so, so what happened was uh, they they were in the middle of this sort of like you know crossfire, and one paintball just pinged out really fast and then bounced off the ground and just like a million to one shot went bonk bang straight into the area that we were talking about the squidgy bits and and he just went down like bam on the floor and they 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 brought in an ambulance for this guy and he literally was bent over in the kind of like he was like in this position like like literally like this like and I'm, for those of you who are listening i am sort of like bending over like i'm cra- like like i'm a crab and like stuck like almost like a dying fly legs sort of like absolutely stuck in the same position like this, like, and this guy, poor Gavin was, he, they, they lifted him into onto a gurney and then into uh, an ambulance. And the poor guy who was just like, he literally didn't come out of that position for like days. Um, so, and that, and that show showbiz. <laughs> that's showbiz baby. Yep. That's it. You're right. Yep, You're right. That's it. <laughs> yeah. <You're right. laughs> Anyway, sorry about this. I, I, it's all no, a bit random. No. It's all a bit random. And he also got no, to work with a uh, another presenter uh, on that show, uh, Emily Booth. What was it like working with her? Yeah, she was she was absolute professional and great fun. And she was she was just so such a lovely human being. And um, I haven't seen her for years actually. Um, she was she was great fun. We had a really good laugh doing that show. That was that was a lot of fun. Ridiculous fun. Absolutely. Excuse me. Wonderful. So uh, you got to co-host Nickelodeon's Slime Time Live. Now, uh, can you share any memories from working on that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and it's another one we're going to have to edit out later on. No. Um, it's, All right. <laughs> what is to do with your squidgy bits? No, it's not. It's fine. Um, um <laughs> I know that Bob gets a thrill out of you know when Bob and I have private conversations. If if I swear, um, I, I I I I I see Bob viscerally react, and it's the same with same. Well, well, actually, Mr. Matt Hammer's a different case now because he 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 can really swear up a storm when he wants. Oh to. yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But, but a lot of people who heard me as a children. No, radio no, host. <laughs> no. I remember you you heard me swear, and you you I was like, free. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm swearing. I'm gonna tell my mommy. Um, so, <laughs> um, um, what was that like? Well, uh, it was it was extraordinary. I got flown across. My this is my first real taste of working in American television. So, and it's a it's a good one, right? I mean, it's straight onto national, then you know, well, cable television. Oh yeah, it's extraordinary. Mm-hmm. One of the so, biggest networks out there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's huge and. I was working with Rich Barry and Mark Schultz and um, uh, Maureen Schultz and a, a whole bunch of you know extraordinary people. Did you work the... with um, Did you work with Alan Goodman at all? Alan... No, but weirdly, years later I did. Years later, but he's not, great. not then. Yeah, he's, he's a great. nice bloke. He ended up being yeah. an exec producer or something. I worked on, but um, but anyway, so he he um, sorry, not he. They uh, Rich Barry and these guys, they brought me over. I did Slime Time. And that was a very weird setup because we were in, that was when they had the studios in Florida and um, in Orlando. And it was, you know, literally like a million degrees centigrade outside um, <laughs> Celsius, you know, whatever. It was so hot, literally, you, you know, the, the steam was rising off people as you walk, they walked past, you know, it was just, it was, it was unbearably hot. And so I'd have to be outside getting slimed um, three or four times a day, um, taking video phone calls from kids who were at McDonald's and um, around the country. And, oh, and yeah. there was a really right. bad delay on these things. I mean, this is like before live streaming, but they were video phones. They were incredible things. I think it was AT&T or something. I can't remember who did it. But um, and it was, um, yeah, I'd have to. You know, basically, I'd always end up getting slimed, and they'd always win. They'd win ridiculous prizes, like twenty five hundred bucks in cash, and and a, a Super Nintendo, and you know, all kinds of amazing stuff. Um, and um, the greatest thing was, I'd be covered in this uh, green slime three times a day, and they would chill it. They would actually put it in the freezer and fridge, and so they'd pour this stuff over me, and I was just like, 
please god i just i just i you please get it right or so no. i can get slimed you know no no there are multiple there are multiple different um recipes do you remember what yours like i've heard oatmeal i've heard applesauce what was yours applesauce and corn flour and a colorant of some sort i think okay but i've heard like vanilla pudding like they're they're different yeah vanilla pudding i've heard definitely quite a lot too yeah (laughs) yeah no thank god it was applesauce it was really nice but the, the the embarrassing thing was i'd have to obviously have a complete costume change so these amazing girls would take me into the changing room and we wouldn't have time for me to go and change myself they'd have to strip me down and take off all my clothes not not all of my clothes but pretty much all of my clothes and then put me back into another pair of clothes and then get me back on the air within 20 minutes and so um what they didn't tell me was the place that they took me to strip me off so i'm, I'm having all my clothes stripped off and i'm basically being washed down and getting stuff off me by these two lovely ladies and as that's happening there's like a whole busload of japanese tourists who turn up by the window but there's a window because it was a tour so oh, I was, yeah, I was, I was the, actually in the in the makeup the, place the, the, fist the whole ball. the fistball. Yeah, the Nickelodeon tour. Oh, so yeah. everybody's oh, yeah. so everybody's taking photos of me. So somewhere in Japan, in a family album, there's a picture of me, a naked British boy. You know, a bit. <laughs> they must have thought, what? You know, like we. I looked at them. I was covered in applesauce, and there were two girls next to me. Like, what were they thinking? <laughs> you know, so. It was, it was a, I was like, um, can we can you shut the curtains? You know, so it was a very, very strange experience. But um, but it was a, it was extremely fun. And I have to say it was uh, I, I'm still friends with the crew. Um, uh, and, and it's you know, it was it was an extraordinary experience. So much fun. Um, and, and my first real taste of working with American audiences. And what were you, what were shooting there around that time when you were there? Uh, Clarissa explains it all, I think. Um Yes, Clarissa explains it all because I ended up hanging out with Melissa Joan Hart and who else? Oh, wow. So that was great. She was really nice. She was so nice. Um, and what else were they doing? A lot of stuff came through when I want like a little hard to t- the timeline of it is kind of weird. So I want to make. Yeah, yeah. There was another show I can't remember the name of right now, but it'll come to me. I think. But it was. Uh, I love Nickelodeon, and uh, you know, if you cut me in half. I'm probably orange. I'm excited because they just brought the splat back. Like the, oh yeah, the, like the, they they put it back in their branding, and for a long time that was missing. And they're kind of going back to the old slime aesthetic. It's really nice. Yeah, I think it's Just great. Really... And 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 I got I got a chance to to improvise. I I got a chance to actually come up with the ideas for the things we would do every day and we we do a trailer every day that was just bat bonkers you know just completely insane and um we'd have people you know walking across with pretending to hold glasses and then i'd trip up over them and they'd smash and all kinds of stuff so so it was they're a very inventive great fun company and i yeah i i'm pleased to hear that they're they're doing that because i think they've still got a big role to play helping kids enjoy life you know Absolutely. And we previously interviewed uh, someone else who uh, was a big part of Nickelodeon for years and worked on uh, the, one of the other live shows there, uh, Jeff Sutphin. Jeff, yeah. Um, did he work with Moira, the British girl? Didn't he do the... No. Which one? He did, you pick, he did you pick live. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, he, that's fine. And, yeah, and then he went on to host the show Brain Surge. Years after that. That was a little later. That was during like the radio right before KOL. So you yeah, have been and that was that Pick Boy as well. He was Pick Boy, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. That's him. Yeah. So Rich Barry worked with him and always said he was a great guy. So yeah. Yeah. No, he's cool. That's great. Nickelodeon. I, I still think from my point of view, I don't think there's enough anarchic, crazy kid stuff happening. It still isn't. And yeah. I and I it's very disappointing i think i just think it's uh it's all just on the level of baby stuff and kids are just adults yeah. they don't, i mean this is what's happening this is why companies are having problems serving um children with good content because kids are now refusing to watch it they're just watching all the adult stuff yeah or streaming you know a lot of the good kid stuff i feel is now on streaming like it 
Mm-hmm. Can't really get a whole lot of good kid stuff on TV. That's why. And... That's why something like Bluey is so huge because right, you, right, it, yeah, it uh, yeah. caters to kids and adults, and more adults want it than kids. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's very true. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's really important because, you know, you don't look at look at us. I mean, you know, I'm obviously the oldest person here. Pardon? What? Huh? Um, but you guys are adults. And so you never really stop thinking about your childhood. But also, I, I think the best adults don't really give up on that part of themselves because it is the thing that makes life more fun and more playful. Um because you know, unless you're having to do really serious, I never have. Well, you see my room. I've got Muppets in my room. <laughs> like, true. You know, like I on my podcast, I spoke with one of the creators of um, Fraggle Rock the other day. Yeah, and, and that was such a. Who know, was that? Her name is Jocelyn Stevenson. You're she, kidding me, Jocelyn. Yeah, I had a conversation with her two weeks ago on the phone. Yes. Oh wow! 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 And so that you are. Wow. You see, you are Kevin Bacon. <laughs> yeah. We're getting about Kevin Bacon at this point. We need to make a whole, no, whole thing I about know, Bob. I don't know if she My knows. God. I don't know if she knows, but because we had a, such a great conversation, and she wants to work with me on one of her latest projects, so you got to tell her that. You know me. Of course, I am going to do that because I, we've we've agreed I'm going to talk to her again because she's an inspiration. I mean, this is the thing, guys. It's, it's about inspiration, isn't it? It's about working with people who really inspire you and fire you up. And for me, Jim Henson and all those guys, you know, the oh, Muppets. Yeah. Muppets, again, anarchy, yeah. not, not kiddie stuff. It was quite... Yeah, I will know, say the new show mm-hmm. is such a departure from that 2015 document i know you didn't like when that came out but the new show is such a return to form oh good because jocelyn said that too and i it's I'm, so yeah. good i really want to see it okay that's good that's good news because because that's what jim henson was always about just, no just... even the people that worked on it i mean they they you know they take what they're given but i don't think they even enjoyed it yeah i I think, you know, again, it has to be, the joy has to be sparked. I want, I want the, no, you, you were here when it premiered. We watched it, remember? Oh, yeah. No, no, we did. We, uh, what, you mean the documentary version? No. Yeah, we, you were at my house. That's right. They, yeah, it wasn't, we both sat there and watched it and went, <laughs> <laughs> didn't really make us laugh. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't edgy. And I think. I think you have to be cheeky. And what Bob said, I think you said earlier, right, Bob, uh, you know, the two tier thing, adults and kids understanding each other, uh, you know, but also not understanding the same humor. So, you know, you'd have something in there for the adults and the kids don't get it. And you'd have something for the kids and the adults don't get it. And I think the Muppets always did that beautifully. You know, they just say things like, you know, pigs in space would be like, tune in last week to miss this week's episode. Oh, yeah. you know, and you, and you, <laughs> as a kid, you'd be like, I, I, you know, that would be like probably just pass you by, but as an adult, you'd be like, I mean, That's even adult. even like that that Star Wars episode, that that that's mind blowing. That one, like that whole, yes, their their satirical humor is just second to none. And I think we need just need more of this, you know, like it, it shouldn't just be the Muppets. It's like they're just because I think we're all getting quite boring. I think I think kids have quite. They have a lot of really good entertainment. Kids, don't get me wrong, but also I just think there's a lot of really boring. That's stuff. why Bluey is so good because it's like, it. Have you seen that? Like that show is great. I really haven't. I, I've I've not been watching a lot of kids stuff to be honest. I. Well, I'll send you link to it later. It is. I've shown it to, television and I've shown it to people, and they're like. Where have I been? Like <laughs> it's one of those things. Like every once in a while, there's something that changes the focus of children's TV that is so different. This is it. Oh, that's cool. I've got to check that out then. Definitely. Thank you for the recommendation. Yeah, absolutely. 
So you also hosted the uh, UK telecast of the uh, Kids Choice Awards. Can you kind of I talk wanna, a bit about I that? Wanna know, I want to know about this. I don't. You never told me any of these stories. Um, the Kids Choice Awards. Yeah. So we, yeah, we would do. So I got sent over to do that as well. I mean, I was really lucky by this stage. I mean, I think there were other members of Nickelodeon, Nick Alive, who were like, why the heck is he getting to go? You know? Yeah. Um, um, but so I was very lucky. Um, it was in Santa Monica. It was in a blimp port, as they called it. It was Santa Monica Airport inside, inside a big hangar. Um, and it was with Whitney Houston. Um, and I actually got to meet her very, very briefly. And she was very, very oh. nice. I, I really liked her. I thought she was really cool. And she and, um, you know, you'd be talking to them and then suddenly the, you know, all the lights would, you know, dim and go out. And then basically what would happen is this. I'd be like, what's happening? And, and her bodyguard was literally the size of Mount Kilimanjaro. I mean, he, he was he was so huge. He blocked out the sunlight. You didn't you couldn't see anything. He was just like I, I was like, oh, oh, hi, you know, so uh, and he was he was quite aggressive. <laughs> and um, we were doing a rehearsal. And I'd done my bit where I was throwing to to Whitney um, so that she would do another, you know, she, she'd throw to me and say, we now go to our U the UK host of Nickelodeon, blah, 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 you know, Rick Adams. So I talked and did something and then threw back to her. <clears throat> and she, um, it was a rehearsal. And so I then walked down and she was still rehearsing. And my boss, uh, David Rose at the time, he brought out his camera um, and it was sort of early digital camera sort of thing. So he took a photo of her. And literally the next thing he knew was this hand coming down from God and just like grabbing this camera and just smashed the camera on the floor. And it was her, it was her bodyguard. And we're like, dude, you couldn't, what, why would you do that? You know, nobody else here. So, so it was, a, it was a very, very strange experience. Um, but it was incredible. I met Roseanne Barr and a whole bunch of other, uh, not Roseanne Barr. Yeah. No, no, no. Not Roseanne Barr. Who did I meet? Rosie O'Donnell. Um, and she was very nice. Um, yeah, yeah. She, it was just... she ho she hosted the tele the US telecast for like um, years. I would say, yeah. She was one of the most. Like she was more. Yeah, she was one of the like the most frequent hosts. I think in the history her, of her, KCAs. Her, mm -hmm. her talk show was so huge that they. She oh yeah, that's right. Like, she was really big. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And that was great fun. And I wore a very, very ridiculously loud jacket and uh, and uh, vest uh, for that. It was a bit like a, I looked like a I don't know what I looked like, like a patchwork quilt. But um, uh, it was great fun being able to do that. That was that was an immense privilege. And um, I have to say, very scary because you just walked out in front of the <laughs> whole place was full of kids screaming, you know, like really loud. And um, that was my first taste of like standing in front of a giant audience and um I, I was scared out of my wits. <laughs> I have to say, I was, I, I, I didn't quite, I wasn't quite in the moment, but um, it, uh, it taught me a lot, and it was another great experience. But what a privilege being on the same stage as Whitney Houston! Like, how cool is that? Right. Yeah. Definitely. Absolutely. So, speaking of awards, you were also the very first host of the Kids BAFTA Awards. Which yeah. Wow. Well, somebody's been doing their research. Is. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow, very impressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um yeah, so they those... prep. They prep. <laughs> yes, I'm really, yes, I'm really worried. I'm really worried about what they're gonna find out. Um, <laughs> um uh. yes, and do you recognize this ferret? He's your ex partner and his name is Jeff. Uh you know, <laughs> like not Jeff, yeah. Yeah, you know what you did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so what did I do, Jeff? You left us. Yeah, we were happy. We had children. We didn't I can't have children with a ferret. Anyway, um, <laughs> I beg to differ. Okay, fine, Jeff. Whatever you say. Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, well, for those that don't know, a BAFTA is a like is like an Emmy. Um, uh, but it's a British version. So, of course, it's pronounced BAFTA and different sounds different. You know, um. So um, a British Academy of Film and Television uh, Award. And um, yeah, so being asked to present that, host that, the first ever was quite a big deal. Anna Hume was the um, children's, uh, head of children's for, for, for the BBC. And she asked me personally to do it. And so um, that was very scary because I was suddenly in a, 
a room full of all the big TV executives. Um, and I think that's what helped me get more work, actually, after that. I think it's quite good. It went very well. Although there was very, one very embarrassing incident where um, a quite famous TV presenter here now, well, not anymore. She used to be really famous. Um, <clears throat> she's now on a radio show. She used to be the secretary of Anna, um, who was being honoured that night, the head of Children's BBC. So people were coming up and they were talking about Anna and saying, you know, all these things. So I, 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 this, this, this lady was coming up on the stage to talk about the head of Children's BBC. And um, I, I said, so, you know, you used to be Anna's secretary, you know, you know, what was that like? And she just literally turned to me in front of an entire audience of like a thousand people and really quite powerful television executives and, and turned to me and said, I don't want to talk about that. And I was oh, just wow. like, Oh, okay, fine. Well, well good luck. You, you You've just made yourself look really bad. It's got nothing to do with me. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta be ready for that stuff, and that's something that we'll get into later, like hmm. with KOL. Like, you never <laughs> knew how people were gonna be. <laughs> I know people are bonkers, and I, that's why I love it. But and you know, you, and you know the story that I'm thinking of because. You know. I can possibly comment. Um, but uh no, no, I mean so so yeah, doing that was a big deal and um and uh yeah, it was a, a great experience, really was an immensely great experience. Um I've just been so lucky, you know. There's been so many amazing things that seem to happen to me, and I've just been a very lucky boy. Oh uh, yes, absolutely. So as as you mentioned in your uh, introduction, you uh for several years hosted uh Radio KOL. Yeah. How did, how did you uh, begin kind of working on that? So I was doing a radio show um, in London on a very, very small radio station um, called Thames FM. And I was doing a uh, a show called the Rick Adams Movement, which um, I suppose had a double meaning. But okay. um, <laughs> <laughs> and and it was a it was a great show. I worked with incredible Sam Walker. If you ever look her up, she's an incredible podcaster and sh and sh she is one of my closest pals and she's wonderful so she and i were thrown together she was my traffic and travel lady um and we just had she was having a terrible time in her life and i was having to drive across london and it was quite stressful and um we had a really good time on the radio station and um i think they thought that i was trying to come up with some clever idea basically of, of how to um how to get my salary increased by coming up with some crazy idea for, for working overseas um but I wasn't. What happened was I was in the pub with my agent, Chris, uh, and Chris is a great guy, Chris North. And um, we were just having a pint and I got a phone call from my from Malcolm Bird, who and John Miller, who I'd, I'd, I'd worked with before at Nickelodeon for, for Malcolm. And he just said, how do you feel about um, running your own kids radio station, um, being in charge of it and and being the host of it? And I said, let me think about it. Yes. Um, and And that was it. And so um, after that, the wheel started ro rolling. And, and I have to say, I got, I had AOL like everybody else did um, back then, America Online, you know, is the only way of dialing up on your computer. And I think I actually had them because they were the cheapest and the best at that time. <laughs> so I was aware of AOL, but it didn't seem like AOL was a massive deal in the, in, in the UK as it, as it was and, you know, was at that time in the US, it was massive. So uh, I didn't quite understand it, but suddenly they had all this money being thrown at me, um, you know, like lawyers and stuff and preparing me to have a, um, you know, visa, background check, all these other stuff. And um, and th then, you know, within a couple of months, literally, I'd, I'd quit my job and I was on a plane to um, to Dallas, Virginia. And um, it was so weird because. I got there to this amazing building and I literally felt, you know, when, you know, when you walk into something, you just think something really great is going to happen here. Mm -hmm. And that's how oh, I yeah. felt. It just felt like, you know, that feeling where you just sort of think, I like these people. I like this place. There's something good's going to come of this, you know, and um, walked into an office where they were just like, um, you know, like kids, toys, monkeys hanging off the ceiling and all kinds of crazy stuff. They had the, you know, there were nerf nerfs everywhere. It was a complete chaos. You know, I'd come in and people would be firing nerfs at each other and, and I'd be like, this is great, you know? And um, I got there and Malcolm, my boss, had basically lied to me and said, 
oh yeah you know the radio studio you're gonna have to build it and um you're gonna have to build everything and you're gonna have to talk to streaming and you're just gonna have to make it all happen and i was like but i don't know how to... okay so um and basically uh they put me in touch with or malcolm had already been talking to this incredible wonderful man called um uh, dan braverman um, oh. from, from radio systems yeah um those what know in the radio business will know that Dan is the architect and creator of pretty much all of the radio Disney studios. And also um, most importantly, um, helping to design and create and build um, Sirius XM's headquarters. Um, oh, wow. in, yeah. Like um, any, DC. any, any nationally syndicated, a lot of nationally syndicated content or just network affiliated stuff. Ikadam. Yes. Um, and so, um, so what happened was, you know, I basically was put together with him, um, and I, I did, I'd never met him before, and I didn't know what he'd done, and he turned up, and he just gave me a screwdriver and said, "Here, you know, get, let's get cracking, let's make this thing happen." So, we built the studio. We, you know, he did all the work, obviously, but I was helping, and he had an engineer and using a new system, the Dillette system, which I'd never seen. And uh, amazing people from Dillette were coming in from Canada to help. And it was just like this. It was it was ins an insanely brilliant um, experience because suddenly, you know, you know, when budget's no question, you know, it's just it's all just happening. And I don't I don't I'm not in charge of any of that. I'm just like my boss is saying, just 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 keep building. And I don't know. There's, there's, so so anyway i'm just thinking okay go so so we build this whole studio and um it takes about a month or so to build um and it's coming together well I'm, and i'm learning about american life and um it's 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 a it's a dream come true i've always wanted to work in america and uh, making great friends at aol and um and suddenly we we have the studio built i mean we had to work through all kinds of problems with it um yeah but dan dan basically built this and there's always problems with all studios you, you always have to like figure it out and and dan was incredible and helped build this beautiful studio with incredible board and and just an immensely brilliant setup and i asked him you know can i i want to have all these sound effects built in instant replay i want uh my own sort of reverb module that i can mess with and do all oh, kinds of yeah stuff. you you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> So, so there, there, there we were, you know, um, ready to launch in September, um, two thousand and three. Twenty years ago. Oh my God! It was funny. I was wow, digging, yeah. I was digging through stuff, and I found the the test show that was playing on a loop. Oh, the, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you found the, it before the show started. It's like a 25 minute kind of like pilot, so to speak. And the DNA of the show was already there. And uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's such a unique, like, mm, there's nothing like it. Ah, oh, thanks, man. That's really, that's well, coming from you, particularly, I mean, that's really, it means a lot. Um, it, um, yeah, it was a yeah. it was a labor of love making and that. I, that and loop I don't show. I don't say the complimentary things to to like you make it egotistical. Like it 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 really meant a lot to me having that having that outlet as a kid. Well, thanks, man. And I I um I certainly got a sense of it. I, I got a sense that of the importance of it because of, because you kept calling back and, you know, and I mean that in the most complimentary way. I mean, it's like the fact that people would want to call back means that I was, I mean, my, my goal was one of my heroes over here in the UK was a guy called Terry Wogan who did an amazing early morning radio show two hours every day on the BBC radio Two, And I don't think anybody's done probably as good a show ever since or you know and or before and um no disrespect to all the other djs but nobody better than terry wogan and um he he focused on building a community and he focused on um talking making it very personal and very in intimate um in a funny way and sending himself up like you know self-deprecation to the max and so i have always loved him and i wanted to build a show like that 
but I and I thought and I just thought, felt that kids would never have heard anything like that before so I thought well it's now now a chance to try and try it myself you know and so um that was the goal and so that's why I came up with the idea of of, of giving everybody a DJ name because then it just made it so much easier for me to remember who these people were, you know, when they yeah. were phoning in. It's just, you know, the same, if it's Jeff and, oh, oh, Jeff, which Jeff? You know, like, it's it's like, oh, no, it's it's DJ Bob. And oh, then you, were, and then and you then know you were, what that means, you know? <laughs> and then you were like, oh, no, here we go. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, not DJ Bob. Yeah. So, but it, but it's, um, it was, it was, and also for me, I had carte blanche. I had carte blanche to, to try and do anything I wanted. And the um, other the other thing is these guys don't didn't really know the show before I told them about it. I showed them like Oh well, I did. I did. I did, well, yeah. That's how that's how I knew we bonded because once yeah. I found that out like, like he gets it because you yeah. were either there or you weren't. Because yeah. I grew up with that and Radio Disney. Radio Disney and Radio KOL, I definitely remember very well. Yeah. <laughs> really, Chris? Uh, that's really cool. Yeah. The, the other the other thing that is not in, like, the, the prep is that... Can you talk about the DJ cam and how innovative that was? Because that was a year into the show, but it's very important to the show's history. You know, that's what's so great about having great friends like Bob, you know, because they remember more than you do <laughs> about your life, you know, and um, uh, the 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 DJ cam. Yeah, was like a year later. You're right. Exactly right. And um, it was an innovation. Malcolm, I think Malcolm came up with it. He just it, was, sort of like, it was huge. It's to like, be- yeah. yeah, it's like it's time. It's time to try and make this like let's make this multi-visual and also it was at a time when um broadband was starting to take off you know so um and broadband well that's that's the reason why we were there we were there to encourage people to listen online and help you know AOL music's numbers and all those kind of things you know um and so yeah so it was decided we would do that and then I said, like, can't we do a launch? Like, can we do a proper launch of this if we're going to do video? And can we do it from somewhere cool? And, oh, you know, yeah. And it, yeah. And I and I didn't, I don't, you know, forgive me, but I didn't know an awful lot about American radio history. I knew, you know, uh, uh, the basics, Casey Kasem and all that stuff. But, 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 you know, I, um, we, 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 we did this launch at WNEW in New York. And, um, oh my God. I think. Uh... That I think it was an Ru- institution as far as New York radio goes, like it's huge. I think it was RuPaul's studio we were using. And um because I think RuPaul was doing the breakfast show. Um but but so we we hooked up, we had we took AOL streaming with us, and they of course had their streaming complex for AOL music around the corner. And so they hooked us up and we put the DJ cam on live. Um, and we we had the you know we had the New York Press there, the New York Times, New York Post, um, and the and um, Washington Post, I think. And um, and you spent a week. You spent a week there. This was a week yeah. launch. Yeah, we did a live show every day um, with this webcam, and we actually had um, one of the the streaming guys there was actually holding a live, an actual proper camera, and was was moving around. Norm was using this camera to to sort of zoom in it was it was great fun i mean i i have to say i think that was probably the most fun i'd had and the for a long thing time. that i the thing that i remember about that is simple plan was there that day the launch day and they were they were like taken back by this technology too so it was unheard of <laughs> which was really cool yeah they they had some we had some fun with them, man. And of course, um, we had this we had a lot of running jokes on the show. And one of the running jokes was was Crazy Matt would phone up and ask for the acoustic version of um Perfect, Perfect by Simple. Yeah, Perfect. yeah. And and I would always say, Oh no, we don't have it. <laughs> and he and just to wind him up, and he'd say, Come on, man. What, 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 do, you, what do you what do you mean you don't have it? <laughs> so um 
I don't know why I chose to wind him up like that, but then kids wound me up because they would always ask for the hamster dance and I pretended I hated it. In fact, oh, I, yeah. I, in fact, <laughs> I, 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 I pretended I hated it to start with and then I genuinely disliked but it. But then you genuinely yeah. <laughs> Well, oh my God. Well, come to think of it, tell them what you used to call school. Oh, when yes. We used to have, well. that's right. So we had a rictionary. Um, which I think we had on the website. We had all kind, of, you know, we had lots of, we had a really fun website, and we had, you know, working with producer Laura, um, Laura Gertzel, who was amazing, um, and Andrew uh, too. And Andrew was incredible. Andrew was totally brilliant. Um, and then Mark and Michelle and Michelle as well, who was brilliant. We went through a fair share of amazing phone call people, but Michelle was the best. And and um, and then we had. Um, uh, of course, yeah, we had Mark, producer Mark as well. And um, we had producer Sheila for a while. And I think she blew a gasket after she she couldn't work with. I think she just couldn't take the pace of our crazy show. And we lost her, unfortunately. But um, but but uh, we had we had a really good crew of people and we had a really good laugh. We had a really fun time. And I was always just trying to push the envelope on everything. And so and so were they. And so they were trying to make, you know, so producer laura would put the rictionary terms up on the sh on the website and we'd have all these different terms for things like instead of i didn't want to say the word school on the air because i thought it was pretty uncool you know to mention that so we'd call it the office so we'd say how was the office how was the office today you know and all this kind of stuff yeah. so and, and it, it, would always, it would always be accompanied by like you the office like a reverb yeah. like a, a the office yeah exactly yeah. and lots of jingles i would make all these handmade jingles and i would try to do I mean, I, th I think what was innovative about the show was um, we would basically, when we started the webcam experience, I was then, I, and my friend Mark Schultz came up with these amazing, um, you know, PowerPoint things that we could use of me with doing lots of silly things. He was great with Photoshop. So we had these really funny sort of pictures. And, and every time there was a guest, you know, it would be their picture or whatever. It was, it was so different because now... People take that stuff for granted, but then it was so different. It was, and I think um, so. What I'd aim to do is we'd, we'd I'd prank call the kids as a different lots tons of different characters, and uh -huh. we, I would sort of um, well I'd play a track, take the calls, and um, and basically the kids would phone out wanting to speak to me, and sometimes it'd be very difficult because they'd be like, I just want to talk to Rick, I don't want to talk to yeah, you know, like you know, so. Um, but I would play these different characters and um, I'd record it and then quickly edit it, turn it around within that, within two songs and then play it back out. So that then what was good about that was then the kid who was involved in the prank would then be able to tell all their friends and then they would sit and listen and then it would go out rather than missing it in real time, so to speak. So, so that was, and I do some live as well. I did some live stuff with Bob, you know, as well with all the different callers, but um, yeah, I mean, I have to find it, but I found a clip of me winning a Nintendo DS from you, <laughs> and I think uh, you told me about this. So I I, I literally am screaming like a little girl, and you're like, "Are you are you okay? Are you good?" Oh yes, yes, you <laughs> did tell me about this. <laughs> well, you here's the here's the finale to that story the other day going through storage i found it and it still works oh you do uh, <laughs> wow that's pretty cool that's very cool wow. that is cool yeah that, that is amazing what games wow. could you play on it i had tetris on it i had like things like a pac-man something or other i had a bunch but right. the one thing that I won, the one thing that I remember vividly is during the end, because the show ended in like 2007. And in the, in the winter of 2006, you had to deal with Target for every day leading up to Christmas. You would do these huge giveaways. And every day was different. And I, you had to be caller 25 to win a $250 Target gift card. <laughs> and at, when I was that age, that was a lot of money. Like, that was 
So I recall her 25 and I was homesick that day. So it sounded like I was crying, but I was really sick. And you were like, well, you don't have to be sick anymore because you won the gift card. And you hear me screaming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. You're screaming, but you're still sick, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> It'll be fine. Yeah. It'll be fine, but you're still sick. <laughs> to anyone watching or listening, what would you like to say to those who have supported you throughout your career? Oh, Matt, I mean, it was an immense privilege to have done the Radio KOL show. It was one of, it still is the best thing I think I've ever made. And it's it's hard when you know that because you don't know when you're ever going to produce something better than that. Maybe I won't. And I I really wanted it to go on forever and ever and ever. But um, AOL, as you know, no longer really properly ex it exists, but like it's like, you know, in a phantom memory somewhere. But it's online and people have AOL stuff, but it's just not like it was. And they I, I remember the day when they came to shut it down and one Basically, there, there was a night of the long knives and we lost John Miller and my boss, Malcolm, all these really good people. And they were suddenly replaced by people who were just much more money oriented. And, mm -hmm. I, you know, they, they literally came to the streaming department that I was part of and said, this guy, he, he said, there's no future in online Internet streaming, is what he said. And and I and we all looked at him, well, you know, look, looked at ourselves and just went. <laughs> we just all know that's insanely the, the worst idea of all time. So, so that's what happened. And so the show came to an end. And so I don't feel like I've really created, I've created a lot of great things in my life and I've done a lot of amazing things and still work with incredible people, but I don't think I've made anything as special as radio KOL. Um, and I, I really hope one day I will, but um, hence talking I, to people. I, like would I would love to help bring kids. Whenever, no, whenever I bring you on my podcast, I always try to bring you back to that mindset because back where you're, that and TV and now, you know, your cartoons and stuff, that's where you're best. And I'd love to see more of that. Oh, Bob, thank you. Um, Gosh. Yeah. I think that's, this is what I want to say to people like Bob and everybody's ever been part of my success, which is really, it's not my success. It's really um, the result of, of, of people wanting to listen. And um, I'm just really honored, actually. I'm just, just really honored that people would want to, um, to join me in some, into some, in some mayhem. I just wanted to make four hours of, of fun every day. That would mean that people wouldn't have to think about their own lives. And um and and we we could and, and me too. I didn't want to think about my own life. I I wanted to you know things weren't necessarily going great in my in my personal life. I I I you know I felt the four hours was a great escape. You know, so um, and I still feel that in a, in a way. And I think maybe one day I will. But I mean, I'm 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 getting old, man. I'm fifty two next week. So it's just like okay, um, and you think the kids, you know, would they want a fifty two year old? person broadcasting to kids i don't know if that's legal you know so but but um but it's i mean it is legal but it's you know what i mean i mean mr rogers and all that but um i i'm just i'm i'm profoundly grateful for for the opportunity to 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 explore that space but also just to be able to interact with american kids and the public and then also the greatest privilege of all is to see those kids turn into adults and and be excellent amazing adults you know um, you know Bob and and Matt and Chaz and um, I mean there's I, I I can't mention everybody. There's so many other guys there's and so I'm, many, and, yeah. You know, so in touch with some of them, not all of them, but um, uh, DJ Pooh Bear, who you know Chris Riddle, who's just you know he's going through hell and is the most amazing guy. And um, it, it, that's the biggest privilege. The big, mm -hmm. biggest privilege is to still have those people in your life. Yeah. Um, um because of a show. Whenever, so, whenever something major happens in my podcast history, I always make sure that you know because you were my biggest advocate when I didn't know what the hell I was doing. And 
it's only right that I tell you what's going on. Uh, you know, Bob, you know how much I love you. You're a lovely bloke. And um, uh, I think for me, what I just tried to be slightly, I think, and I could never really carry the mantle of it. But the reason that I loved doing the job like I did was I, in some way it was kind of like animal meets Kermit the frog. And I, and I always loved Kermit's inclusiveness and what, and belief in other people. And there was a song, you know, um, with, you know, with his talk, speaking to his nephew um, and they would, they would sing about, you know, if you believe in me and you know, all this kind of stuff. And it was, it was, it just takes one person to believe in you. And then, you know, that yeah. the, the whole attrition of that. Um, and that is what we all need, right? Everybody needs someone to oh, believe yeah. in. Um, everybody yeah. needs someone to, and it is, it's an act of love, man. It, it's not, you know, in a kind of, um, I can't think of the right way to explain it, but, you know, some people think love is soppy, is a, is like, you know, like pathetic, but it's like, I, I don't look at it like that at all. I think love is, a, is an action. It's like, it, it's, it's wanting to be, um, part of something bigger and better and to help others see that too. And I think, um, gosh, this is getting really profound and deep. This isn't it. What happened? I've really got to get off this flu medication, man. Seriously. What, what happened to me? No, I mean, I was, but, but uh, it's, it's where the best stuff, <laughs> it's where the best stuff comes from. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's where we all are, man. It's our souls. It's like all of you guys. It's like you, Jake and Chris and Matt and Bob, um, the, the reason why you guys are together and you talk a lot is because you have this shared kind of kindness and understanding, but also um, joy. And, and, the, and, the to fact share that I, and the fact that I could share you and the show with these guys. Well, it's an, like I said, it's an honor to be on it and, and to be with you guys. And, and I think, um, you know, keep doing it because because you never know what what fascinates me about all of this is that I meet people years later who come have sort of like, have suddenly appeared and gone. Hey, man, I was going through a really difficult time and um, I listened to you and you made me laugh. Thank you. And that's I just get strange things. And I'd be like, wow, out of the blue, like n nothing for four or five years. And then suddenly an email from somebody who was just like when I was growing up and you'd be like, well, here we go. And um, and that's that's for you guys with your show you never know who you're touching in in that way and in, in a good in, in such an extraordinary and beautiful way um and that is the medium of radio and tv and i think um never ever give up on that and and never not believe that it's not doing something for somebody somewhere it's so it's so we live in such terrible times where you know you live by the likes and the clicks and the you know and 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 that is a measure of how popular you are. You know, even from my perspective, going to see agents and people like that, they're always looking at, oh, what's your social following? And it's just like, who gives a crap about my social following? What, do you like me as a personality or, or as a person who's solid enough to be able to be interesting to an audience? And But also, am I a good enough person inside to carry that mantle? Um, and I think people don't think about that. <laughs> right. So... So keep doing what you're doing um, because it's, it is a beautiful thing. And the medium of talk is absolutely beautiful. And I think, I honestly think, you know, all the problems we're having right now are terrible, terrible problems, but they will only be solved if we talk. They won't be solved by people hurting each other. They, it's never going to be solved that way. It'll be solved when people are honest to each other and kind, but also compassion comes from understanding and doesn't mean there's not going to be hatred, but it's just... You know, that's you just got to get into the into the really sticky stuff and yeah, and try to find some some through line. Anyway, yes, that, that's my treatise. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes. So, if people would like to connect with you, where can people find you? Thanks, Chris. Um, you can find me um on my my bank details on. Oh, oh no, sorry, sorry. Um, <laughs> you can um uh, uh you can find us uh, find me um at my website, which is uh, rickadamsonline.com. So. I like that because I chose it deliberately because it's R A O L. <laughs> so, um, oh, so Rick, oh Rick Adams. My God. Yeah, <laughs> that's, it all makes oh, sense it. now. Yeah, it's, it's like season five. Now. See what I did there? Um, so, rickadamsonline.com. Um, and uh, I am Rick Adams on uh, Insta. And um, you can find me that way, I think. Yeah. So, those are the ways to find me. And, yes. um, Either way, please reach out. Happy to happy to catch up. Happy to share good memories, but also happy to um, advise, help, 
thoughts, creativity, silliness, preferably silliness, anytime. Yes. Links to those will be in the description down below for people to connect. So the last question that uh, Jake's about to ask is a question we ask all of our guests at the end. Go ahead, Jake. Chris, uh, of course, this podcast is called Jake's Happy Nostalgia. Mm -hmm. Hey, look at that. Thank you, post-production. Um, when you think of nostalgia, what do you think of, or in your own words, how would you define the word nostalgia? Gosh, I'm glad you didn't get me to spell it. Um, it's got to be a triple word score, isn't it, in Scrabble? Surely. What do you think, Jake? Um, mm -hmm. I, 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 <laughs> um, nostalgia. It is a it's a desire to look back and live in a period previous in your life or in history with great joy and happiness, maybe a bit of sadness, but to relive some extraordinary and beautiful moments because they were so precious. You want to, you want to taste it all again. It's like a really good Chinese meal. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> great words then Don. Yes, thank you. Well, uh, Rick, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. This was an absolute blast. Yes. Guys, anytime. We can do this again. Um, I, I'm, yeah, I'm, absolutely. I'm really honored, um, really honored to be part of the show. Thank you for being so gracious to me when, you know, I was, I was completely out of my brains. on. Um, I made sure I texted you right away. Yeah, right. and Bob, and, you know, over the years, because Bob and I have been friends for a long time, too, and he's told me wonderful stories about you. So the fact that, you oh, know, yeah. he was able to connect us and that we're fin finally able to, you know, meet and right. chat was just amazing. I have, yes. I have to catch up with you, Kim, too. You still have to meet my fiance. Oh, that's right. That's right. I do. I do. Well, I, I mean, I, I'm supposed to be officiating at your wedding, aren't I? I think. <laughs> you know that you're going to be, I'll be like, does any man in here know? And then the crazy Matt will turn up and be like, I do. She loves me. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds a lot like uh, him. Yes. So that'll be, that'll be it. Um, but Chris, thank you. I, I appreciate that. Very kind words. Um, and um, an honor to meet friends of Bob. So, you know, and, and, nice. um, and I'm, I'm sincere, guys. It's it's lovely to to be in such great company and and to enjoy talking so much, you know. And my compliments to you is that you know you got such great and thoughtful questioning and um and have yeah, such they do their time. homework. They, yeah, they... yeah, very, very, I felt very taken care of, and um, I really enjoyed it. So so any 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 way I can be of service and help you guys in the future, let me know. Yeah, let of, course, know, of course, of course. Let me know if you're around in the next couple of weeks. We gotta we gotta catch up. Yeah, man. About time. I'm running a retreat next week. Don't oh, ask. I heard about that. Yeah. <laughs> That's another story. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, enjoy the rest of your uh, day, Rick. Uh, keep you. in touch. I'll let you know when this goes up. And yes, we will gladly uh, love to have you back on and talk about some more uh, more wonderful things. Absolutely. There's plenty, plenty to talk about. And, and guys, thank you so much. Jake, thank you. Great honor. Really appreciate it very much. And Chris, thank you. Thank you, sir. And and I have to say, Matt, thank you as well. Thank you for being so kind to me. And, thank you. Um, and can you thank that other guy? What's his name? DJ uh, Bib? Bob? Blo uh, yeah, Blo nope, don't. Okay. don't yes. Nope, don't. No. Thank you, no, thank, no, thank you Bob. You really. Uh, thank you, Bob. You know, you really helped us out with this whole podcasting thing. And yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's, so, he's, he's a lovely so, man. I mean, I, I, so always, I, I always say that without me finding that show, you, there would not be a DJ Bob. There would not be any of this. So, yeah. and or, that is something. Or, or I'm not too sure if we if we be met you, Bob, if it if it wasn't for him. So, yeah. 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 Well, I I'm um yeah I'm pretty overwhelmed. because I I wasn't in that space hmm. before radio. I didn't know how to interact hmm. with people on the internet. So this it really. It sounds cliche, but it really did help hmm. do what I do now. Um, I yeah, I don't know what to say. <laughs> That's really uh, you guys have really touched me. I appreciate that very much. Um, uh -huh. and uh, uh, it's just it's an honor. It's an honor. It's it, I mean it's it's um just goes to show what what silliness can bring you know and I, that's why I believe Jim Henson's so right you know like happiness silliness stupidity. All of those things just bring out such great things, and I think they're the, the probably the best traits of hum the human race. So um, I'm really I'm really glad you found me, Bob, and I'm glad you you steered me towards these excellent gentlemen. And um, 
you know it's great isn't it that we're all part of a chain because i wouldn't be doing radio stuff if i hadn't loved all the radio people i listen to and so that's what radio is really good at yeah yes. podcasting all of that stuff is it's a chain we're all a chain and i think um just keep keep doing it guys keep doing it and and everything, like said, anything i can do to help i uh, you know I, i'm at your service thank you that really means a lot well enjoy the rest of your day rick again i'll let you know when this goes up and i look forward to having you back on soon yes thanks, love you, rick. yes. thank you love you too bob love you love yes. you guys thank you matt you thank too you. take thank care rick yeah, thank you. Love to you take care love you guys bye-bye bye thanks bye. Bye. thank you bye care, bye See ya. bye Oh, I'm still here. <laughs> it's goodbye from us as well, everyone. We absolutely enjoyed our time with uh, Rick Adams. And again, we will have him back on soon to talk about some more uh, things that we didn't get to talk about today. But um, again, a big thank you to Bob for uh, guesting on this one. He's guested on a couple of them. And yes. uh, he's thank definitely you, uh, coming to hop in on some other interviews. But, um, but, this, but this one is so... Oh, yeah. This one is... Uh important like it just because like i said without those four hours every day you wouldn't know me right and yeah i mean rick inspired you to start your podcast you inspired us to start ours yeah. which yeah. ties and back then, to rick so it's then, it really yes. it really comes full circle oh, no, and then, it, it's a it's a full circle moment no and that's why mm. i was so talkative in this one because it's like i wanted to because unless you were there and you saw the show on a regular basis if you tried to explain it to somebody now they wouldn't they wouldn't get, get it. it yeah so like i i mean we were still on the air but I could tell you so many stories about that show that they did things that nobody else did. Yeah. Well, but I'm happy to share him with you guys. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Definitely an honor. Thank you. Definitely yeah. an honor for sure. Yes. And to all of our viewers and listeners, um, keep on the lookout for wonderful interviews coming your way. And as always, what do we say, Jake? Yes. Keep nostalgia alive. Take care, everyone. See you next time. See ya. Bye. 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 Thank you for tuning in to another wonderful Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show interview. Be sure to follow Jake and the crew on social media and stream the show wherever you find your favorite podcasts. And as always, remember to keep nostalgia alive. Bye-bye.